Our pleasure to welcome in one of the legends at BYU, Heisman Trophy winner, Ty Detmer, joins us now over Zoom. Ty, welcome back to the program. It's been too long. How are you? I'm doing good. Yes, it has. So things are good here in Arizona. And we saw you working directly with Max Hall, getting him ready for the alumni game. So how would you grade his performance after reviewing each and every snap that he played in that game? You know, I don't know if I had much to do with that, but that was the problem. Like uh, Jack had asked me if I wanted to play in that against Max Hall. And I'm like, I know Max is going to train for this. He's going to draw <laughs> plays. I'm going to have to work too hard. So I don't want any part of that. Uh, but <laughs> he did great. I mean, it was fun to see all the guys out there running around. Nobody got hurt. It looked like it was uh a good time had by all my daughter actually had a baby that day. So I was kind of on standby. So I couldn't commit to, to be in there at that time. The real reason was she was due and had her, her third kid. So I'm a grandpa times three. So. Wow. wow. Congratulations. Grandpa Ty. Hey, don't let Jamal Williams hear about that. Cause he'll add that to his repertoire of nicknames for you. Oh, I yeah, it'll be it'll be something else. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Ty, it was obviously a success. Speaking of the the alumni game, so obviously you weren't able to do it last year. Are you willing to commit early? Would you be an early commit to the fa- to the alumni game next year? You know, I I have committal problems. You know, <laughs> I, I like slow play things. I don't know if I'll have hunts at the ranch. I, you know, I kind of like about a month out. That's kind of my, my sweet spot for being able to commit to things. So not going to commit at this point. I know Steve Young is all in. Yeah. I know all his secrets. I played with him a year in the 49ers. So, you know, I'd feel more comfortable playing against Steve than I would probably Max at this point. <laughs> can you Can you at least give us the fact that the BYU alumni game is at least in your top three of things to do at that time? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a top. I mean, like I said, look like everybody had a great time. It's fun to see, uh, you know, former teammates out there, former guys you coached. Um, you know, it, it looked like a lot of fun, a great group. And uh, it's always a good time being back at BYU. Uh, we'll look forward to the social media post that reveals what you will be doing at next year's alumni <laughs> game time. <laughs> Ty Detmer is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Let's talk BYU football. The Cougars are coming off a couple of double-digit win seasons, 11 in that strange COVID setup with Zach Wilson in 2020, 10 wins last year, including a 5-0 and record against the Pac-12, 6-1 and against Power Fives. Jaron Hall is back. What is your early prognostication of what you expect from Jaron Hall in 2022? Well, I love Jaron. You know, he's a, he's a great player, great young man. Um, you know, when I came back and coached there in 2016, seems like forever ago, but he was committed and then kind of not sure what he was going to do. And, and we kind of re-recruited him and, and I'd worked with Jaron at some of our camps we'd done there in Utah and, in the past and just felt really good about him being a part of the program. And, uh, and he served a mission, came back. And so it's been, you know, six years since, uh, since we had those conversations. Uh, but you know, the guy's done everything. I think they've asked him to do. He's become the leader of the team. Um, you know, he's athletic, but you know, he's, he's showing that he can, you know, run the team, uh, run the offense and do what's asked of him. And then uh, when things break down, he's athletic enough to extend plays and, and get it to guys. And uh, obviously a successful season last year. And I really feel like he'll build on that this year. With everybody knowing just how good Jaron is, obviously everybody wants him to be in Provo as long as he possibly can. Uh, but there are a lot of pub- publications that depending on which one you look at in next year's NFL draft, they have him going anywhere between the first to the third round. What do you think of his, his NFL prospects? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the way the game is, is moving. Uh, everybody's looking for guys that can extend plays, create, uh, run the system. And uh, he's got a great foundation there at BYU. I think most quarterbacks that come out of there will. And, uh, you know, so again, it's, it kind of becomes an age situation where you want to try to play for as long as you can. And, and so if you're 23, 24, it kind of gets to the point where you got to get that clock started in the NFL at some point, and especially, you know, with a couple years of being the starter, 
Now he's got to stay healthy and go through the season and do all of those things this year to, to get to that point. But if everything goes as planned, I think, you know, he's ready for that next jump after this season. A time, maybe you just answered the question, but what is the biggest question mark with Jaron if it's not just his ability to stay healthy for an entire season? Yeah, I think that's it, you know, is um, he, he's got to, you know, prove that again. And, you know, every year it becomes that. That's the main thing for quarterbacks, especially year two is just staying healthy and, and being smart. And, and then uh, I know for me, you know, my second year being the starter was 1990, the Heisman year. But fortunately, I'd been able to play as a sophomore and had that season under my belt. But you really get comfortable in that role. And and then my senior year was just kind of, you know, you know, establishing myself and, and being a team leader and, and managing the young guys that were coming through that season. So uh, this will be that for him a little bit. He's got some guys coming back, but they also lost a few guys. So um, it's it's getting those young guys to catch up quickly and, and help them almost become a coach on the field. Now, Ty, it's a different game these days. And I just want to point out that you finished third in the Heisman voting in 1991. I think BYU fans sometimes gloss over that because you won it in 1990. It was incredible. But you kind of had a knack for playing hurt and banged up. And so what do you attribute that toughness to, and how do you push that into the generation of football now? <laughs> well, I really didn't have too many injuries. You know, I mean, I, I took my shots, but I, I really wasn't injured much. And I think uh, – you know, maybe only being 175, 180 <laughs> pounds uh, to go with the hit a little more. But, um, you know, I, I think growing up, just my dad was a football coach and you always heard about toughness and this kid's a tough kid and those kind of things. And so it just probably kind of ingrained in me that, hey, you know, never let them see us stay on the ground, you know, that kind of deal. So no matter kind of the shot you took, I always tried to get up and never wanted to be helped off the field. So uh, probably being a little undersized too, had a little chip on my shoulder. I had to prove that uh, I could do that. So Ty, not only do you obviously know Jaron Hall, but you've worked with Jacob Conover as well. So, you know, BYU's top two quarterbacks. What do you what do you make of Jacob as he goes into this year as the backup to Jaron Hall? Yeah, Jacob's, uh, you know, he's a guy I actually offered uh, while I was there and felt really good about him, too. So he's been down here working with Max, uh, you know, when he's in town uh, back home and uh, you man, he's got a strong arm. He's really uh, throwing it well, throws it accurate. Just watching him in high school, uh, smart kid. You know, he wasn't known for taking off and running with it, but I remember, you know, watching him in a state playoff game and he pulled it down and took off when he had to. And, you know, just a real competitive kid that um, loves the game, you know, and, and so they're in great shape right now in the quarterback room and, uh, you know, in a day where a lot of kids are leaving for greener pastures or what they think are greener pastures, proud of uh, him for hanging in there and, and kind of waiting his time and learning it. And it'll pay off for him uh, when he does get his shot. So, you know, excited to see Jacob get an opportunity too at some point down the road here. Now, Ty, based on what you've done as you went through your NFL career and Brett Favre and Michael Vick, among others, have talked about just your mastery of understanding defenses. What would you say is the most important thing for a guy like Jaron Hall and even Jacob Conover, because they have NFL dreams too, what's the most important thing that they need to work on as they pursue that? Well, I think every offense is a little different. Um, so I'm not, you know, in there and, and understanding what's going on. But for the, for the most part is, you know, a lot of the pre-snap, looks you get um, is understanding kind of eliminating certain routes in a play where you can simplify it for yourself. And, and I think with Jaron year two in the system, you know, being the guy uh, he's really been in that system now for about four years. So he's got a, I'm sure a great understanding of it. Now he can kind of eliminate some of the noise, some of the routes that, you know, you don't need to, to have to look at when you understand his cover two it's, you know, tight end to check down or, you know, single high, all right, maybe look to take a shot and then get to check down. So, you know, as you go through the offense, it's really about 
making the game simple for yourself and, and not trying to do too much at times, but, you know, and then there's situations in a game where you got to make a play and uh, he's got that ability. So uh, it's, it's managing the game. And then when the time's right, take the shot. You obviously know a little something about football in the state of Texas and Big 12 country. Um, obviously, everybody's just beyond excited that BYU will be joining the Big 12 coming up in 2023. From a football standpoint, what do you make of the fit between the Big 12 and BYU? I think it's a great fit. You know, the, the obviously the South, they love football and, and a big part of it. And, and BYU travels well. It'll be... Uh, It'll be exciting, I think, to for one, to be in a conference. I've always said really need to be in a conference and have those opportunities to to play teams every year, get familiar with teams, and and uh, it helps you to really kind of scheme and game plan and, and understand what you're going against every year. So excited for the team that way. And then, uh, you know, excited for the fans in Texas. You, you know, the southern part of, of the country will get to – to see a lot of the football games. I'm disappointed Texas didn't hang in there, and that might be a guaranteed <laughs> win. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it'll be a fun conference. I think it's wide open. You look at the points scored every week, and, and uh, you know, I think BYU is a great fit for going in there and, and having a chance to be successful right away. Yeah, I'm hoping that Texas does stick it out for at least two years and BYU gets to play them each of the two years because the Cougars have had a nice history against Texas and you played in one of those big games. Everyone wants to talk about what Taysom and Jamal did against Texas in 2013. Ty, you were part of a 47-6 to win over Texas in 1988. So did you were you the man that started the dominant run for BYU football over Texas? No, that's probably Sean Covey. I think <laughs> I here before Bob Jensen, we played at UT, and I was redshirting, and we beat them down there. It was a tighter game, but then uh, that next year, Sean Covey lit them up, and I got a little mop-up duty in the fourth quarter, so I did get to play and completed a few balls, I think, that game, but that, it, can't take credit for that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you're right. Two for three that game. Uh, you did complete a 44-yard pass and a touchdown in that game. You had a passer efficiency rating of 355, Ty. I, I think you put the fear of BYU into Texas late in that game. No, they were already beat up by the time I got there. So <laughs> you, you said you kicked Max out of his office to do this interview. Is Max, like, off camera right now? Is he listening to all of this? You know, uh, Max gets to come in a little later, but he's here later in the evening generally with the middle school AD side of things. So um, I don't have an office here, actually. I kind of prefer to stick and move. That way they don't know where to find you. They don't know if you're there or not. So I just borrow Max's office in the mornings if I need it. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Ty, before you go, I think all BYU fans uh, just want to know uh, how you're doing, how your family's doing overall, and, um, you know, what your specific role is down there. Obviously, you're coaching football, but what else is happening in your life? Yeah, things are great. Um, kids are doing good. Grandkids now. I've got three of those. So, um, you know, things just keep moving on. And uh, head coach down here at ALA Queen Creek, and, and uh, then uh, – I work for our district too. We've got five K through 12s here in the Phoenix area. And I help kind of oversee the athletics for all of those as well. And, um, but really more full time here at, at our school here, it just, it takes a ton of time with being the head coach. And fortunately got a lot of help with, with Max and James Wierenski or DC. Dennis is leaving us next year, moving back to California, I think. So, uh, Shimon Willis is actually going to come join us and help us out. So, we're gonna we're gonna upgrade over Dennis with a little youth, <laughs> so, um, but no, we're it's a great spot. We're having a good time, and uh, you know you get to be around the boys. They keep you young and energetic, and uh, you know it makes it for a fun work environment. And never feel like we're at work, you know. Here, so uh, we're having a good time, and everything's great. So. Fantastic, Ty. It's great to talk with you. Thanks for the time. Let's do it again soon. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ty.